All right. Oh, son of a gun. Let's see. Okay. Um, what we're going to do is finish up chapter three by starting chapter three and then finishing it. So that's what we're going to do. Okay. Um, we've got a camera here because I'm recording this for some people who are not here. Um, in order to facilitate it, what I'm going to do, if you're not here, put your forehead next to your screen. This should open the neural synapses. Make this a little bit easier. Okay, first thing. This right here is in course documents. Naming ionic compounds. You should do this for your own edification. Do it. Why? Because it'll help you. How? Because if you don't know it, you'll be up the creek without a river. You'll be SOL, and I don't mean standards of learning. You, you need to know how to do this, okay? <laughs> so, <clears throat> please, on your own time, figure out how that works. Now, what I'm going to do, I've got notes. Here are the notes for chapter 3. Now, there are 12 pages, and it's like, holy smoke, 12 pages, what the hell? Six of these you have already done. And I'm going to go through those fairly quickly. And then the other six, that's new stuff, we'll cover that and we'll be done. We'll leave here um, with all luck, any luck. Um, Tasty Freeze or Dairy Queen, it'll be Dairy Queen tonight. We'll still be open and they'll have blizzards. So, anyhow, here we go. Um, chapter three is on molecules, compounds, and chemical equations, and believe it or not, that's what we're going to cover. Okay, what we did last time, we talked about ionic compounds, and you guys, I don't know if you remember, because it's been a whole week, but ionic compounds are when you have an ion from a metal bonding with an ion from a non-metal. So, metal and a non-metal. Okay? Um... We're going to look at naming. We did naming last time, and that's what that sheet was about, was about the naming. But uh, we're going to just go through this just to make sure I didn't miss anything when I was telling you about it. And we're going to talk about all three of the two types of chemical bonds, the ionic, the covalent, and metallic bonds. Okay? All right. So starting off with ionic bonds, Last time I said there were cations and anions. Cations are positive, anions are negative. And you get cations when you lose electrons. Now, which of the elements lose electrons? On what side of the table? Left side, okay? And these are the metals. The metals tend to lose electrons. And when you take negative away from something that is neutral, it goes positive, okay? And then anions are on the right side of the table, and that's when you're adding electrons so that they have the same number of electrons as noble gases, okay? All right. And it says here hydrogen makes both um, a positive and a negative, so it, it does goes both ways, so to speak. Okay. Table 3.2, we looked at that last Tuesday, and that's the one that lists um, everything in group one, everything in group two, aluminum, and then those last three. Remember last time we talked about it, it's just zinc, scandium, and silver. Those are really the only three that you have to memorize. The rest of them you can get from looking at the table. Okay, table 3.3. Um, in the book, we looked at that last time, and it's on the anions, and all of these you can get from the periodic table, okay, because the last, well, next to last column, column 17 with the halogens, they just need one more electron so that they could be like column 18. So those are always just a minus, like fluoride, F minus, chloride, Cl minus. For column 16, Oxygen gains 2, sulfur gains 2, so it's O2 minus and then S2 minus. And then for group 15, you only have to worry about um, nitrogen and phosphorus, okay? 
and it's nitride and phosphide. Okay, next one, table 3.4. Those are cations that can form different charges. And we looked at some of those. Now, some people get a little bit worried about these because you've got like iron Fe2+, plus, iron Fe3+, plus, and so on. How do you figure those out? How? Oh, how? I'm going to show you. If I have a pen, excuse me. So here we go. We've got FeCl3. FeCl3. What is the charge on the iron? Yes, sir? What's the charge on the iron? Yes, plus three. Fe3 plus. How did you know that? Do you have like superior intellect or? <laughs> or? You know that each of those chlorides is Cl minus, and how many did it take? Three of them. Why did it take three? Because the Fe is a three plus, so it took three minuses in order to cancel it out, because it's got to cancel it out and be neutral, okay? And if that doesn't work, you can do it this way, And I'll do it like this. This would be a 3 plus, and this would be a 1 minus. You could do it that way if you wanted to, whichever way you want. Okay, I'm going to test for understanding. You may understand, you may not. I'm going to test for understanding. So, CR2O3. CR2O3. So I'm going to ask you, what's the charge on chromium? It's what? You are absolutely right. Plus three. It's plus three. Okay. How do you know it's plus three? Because you see it over here, that's a little three. What's the charge on the oxygen? Minus two. So that is, um, that's how it works. Okay. Um, yes, sir? So, how do, okay, how do you turn again if it's a positive or a minus? The first one's going to be positive. The last one's going to be minus. It's always like that? It's always like that. Okay. And the first one's going to be a metal, and the second one's going to be a non-metal. I'm going to turn the page. Okay, now you guys know how to do this because we did this last time. Do you remember? We did. We did this last time. So here we go. Ways to make simple ionic compounds combine any of the cations from group 1 with group 17. Group 1 with group 17. So group one, the alkali metals, they include lithium, sodium, potassium, rubidium, and cesium. Okay, they each will lose an electron to become a cation. And then group 17, those are the halogens. So it'd be F minus, Cl minus, Br minus, I minus. You just combine those together and you make an ionic compound, a simple ionic compound. Another way, would be to take a cation from group two, which includes magnesium, calcium, strontium, and barium, okay? And then you combine it with two anions from column 17, okay? And why two? It's because the charges have to cancel. So if you've got two positives, it's gonna take two negatives to cancel the two positives. And that's how it works. So far, so good? Okay. Um, you can combine aluminum, Al3+, plus, and this time it'll take three, because it's three plus, so you need three minuses to balance that out. Yes, sir? So the two from the element is how much the charge is going to be. Mm -hmm. And um, you can also, knowing that oxygen is two minus, 
sulfide is 2 minus, oxide is 2 minus, sulfide is 2 minus. You can combine either two of column one, like these two lithium ions with one oxygen, so it's Li2O, or one ion from column two with the um, ion from column 16, like oxygen. And then right here, in this highly technical drawing here, and I tell you, you guys were lucky I had art in college. I didn't, or I would not be able to draw that. There you go. That was freehand. I didn't use like a program to do that. But there you go. That's how it works. And then making the metals with the um, transition elements, we looked at this last time. Like with iron two and the oxide, okay. <clears throat> what you have to do with these, since there are two different irons you can use, you have to use the Roman numerals, like iron two, iron three. Make sense? Okay. And again, we looked at this on last Tuesday, so you've had a week for it to percolate through your brains. So hopefully, it's percolated some. Yes, ma'am. For number two, on ways to make tiplon compounds, top them, the two from the bromine. How did that cancel out? Two from the bromine. On number two. Number two. Yeah, you have two minuses to combat the two pluses. So what are you saying? So I'm saying how can we still run two? What about the two in front of the VR or behind? Oh, that two there? Yeah. Is that two right there? It's BR2. That's a good question. That two is that two. So that two doesn't cancel out? Why would it cancel out? I mean, I'm just, I it take, it, all it's saying is it takes two of them. It's like in those greeting cards. It takes two. Okay. Yeah. See, this so, has a plus two charge. This just has a minus so one you charge. Over the thing, you don't bring that two down. Yeah, you just bring the charge down, not the two. Okay, that stays where it is. Okay. And the same here, this has a three plus, this just has a minus. So it takes three of these and you write it ALCL3. Okay. Does that make sense? Okay. All right, so now, what is the charge on copper in CuBr2? CuBr2. This one right here, what's the charge on the copper? Anybody, anybody at all, what's the charge on the copper? Plus two, or two plus. And how do you know? Because it took two bromides, and bromide is always minus one. It took two of them. Yeah, please move. Okay. All right. Polyatomic ions. Okay. Polyatomic ions are molecules that have charges. Okay. Molecules that are not neutral. And what's the difference between a molecule and um, ionic compound? Well, the molecules are made of just um, non-metals. All of these are non-metals. However, taken together, they each have a charge. And so you could use one of these substituted in for either a cation, and this is the only one that's a cation, or an anion. So instead of having a metal ion, you could have ammonium. And instead of having a non-metal ion, you can have a polyatomic anion in there, okay? And examples of this, NO3 is nitrate. You can have Na plus NO3, and it gives you NaNO3, which is sodium nitrate. There you go.
Okay. And I'm really glad that you guys took the last seven days to learn all of these in that table. That was, yeah. It will pay off. It will pay off in the long run because you'll encounter these again and again. And that you know them already means it'll be a lot easier. Okay. All right. These are not all of them. Okay. These are ones like I put these in because these, as a minimum, you really should try to get these first. And then whatever else is in the table. Okay. But these you absolutely need to know. Sometimes these are all that people really get. But anyhow. What I want to talk about now are oxyanions, and an oxyanion is one that contains an oxygen. Because oftentimes you have different numbers of oxygens it can contain. And the name changes a bit. Like you see here, NO3 with a minus is a nitrate, NO2 is a nitrite. Um, what's the difference? Well, nitrate has more oxygens. And the way it works is the A-T-E ending goes with the one with more oxygens, and the I-T-E goes with the one with fewer oxygens. And if you look at sulfate, it's SO4. Sulfite is SO3. Okay? Now, those are very common. Very, very common. We also have chloride and chlorate. But the trick with chloride and chlorate is... You can have even fewer than two. So what do you do? What do you do if you have even fewer? Well, what they do is put a hypo in front of it. Okay? Um, why do I not just ignore this and not even tell you about it? It's because these are important in everyday things. For example, sodium hypochlorite is regular bleach. That's Clorox. Okay? Chlorite is pretty popular. Chlorate perchlorate, okay, in this case you put a PER in front, and hypo is even less, per is even more, okay? Now, with these, one thing that you need to know is how to name an acid that's made out of these, okay? How do you make an acid out of these? Well, you make an acid out of these by combining a hydrogen with it, okay? For example, um, there's an acid, and we'll learn how to name it, that you get when you have HNO3. HNO3 is a very common acid. It's called nitric acid, and we'll look at how to name that, okay? All right. Um, hydrates. Uh, you guys work for the hydrate lab, right? Okay. So what were you supposed to do in the lab? Well, first thing you did was you took your hydrate and you drove the water off. So when you drive the water off, what does the hydrate become? Dehydrated. Dehydrated, or there's another word for it, anhydrous. Anhydrous. Oftentimes they're different colors. In the book, and there's an example where it is pink and then it, well, purple, and then it turns um, pink when you drive the water out. Um, what was the one that you guys used in lab? What color was it when it was hydrated? Blue. Blue, right. And what color was it when you drove the water off? Brown. It was brown, okay. So that's what, that's how a hydrate works. Hydrate works where you've got a salt that loves water so much that it binds water tightly into its crystal. And the only way to get rid of the water is to heat it up. The way you write it is you write the salt and then you put a big dot. And it's not a period, it's like just a big dot. I couldn't put a big dot because Microsoft Word wouldn't let me put a big dot. I hate it, but anyway. I wanted a big dot. And then what you have to do is put how many moles of water you have. In this case, BACL2 dot 6 moles of water per BACL2. Okay? So for you guys, you're going to get moles of water. So what you want to do is you first want your 
cation and anion, and then you're going to put a dot, and then you're going to put the moles you got for water, for your mole ratio of water, and it might be a 1 or a 2 or a 3 or a 4, and then you write H2O. And if you have any questions, see me at the break or see me after class. I'll be glad to help you. I want you to get this stuff right. Turn the page, please. Here are some of the common prefixes that you use depending on how many waters you have. If you've got one water, it's monohydrate. Two waters is dihydrate. Three is tri. Four is tetra. Five is pentahydrate. So that's how that works. Okay, now before we do molecular compounds, what I want to do is naming acids. Naming acids. So if you would, please turn to page five. And by the way, the notes are up on um, Blackboard. I try to put them up before class. Make a habit of doing that. Okay, acids make H plus ions in water. They usually have a hydrogen that's written first in the formula. So HCl dissolved in water makes H plus and Cl minus, which is chloride. The H plus is the acid part of it, okay? Uh, there's a little AQ here and a little AQ here, and there should be an AQ here. That means aqueous, it means it's dissolved up in water. Um, you have to put that really because here we see HCl and a little G as a gas. What that means is that this is a molecule that is a gas where you have hydrogen connected to the chlorine, okay? It's bonded. Uh, the HCl aqueous, none of it is like that. It is completely dissociated. It is 100% just H plus and Cl minus when you put that in water. Acids have a sour taste. Um, acids will dissolve many metals, and when they dissolve the metal, what they do is produce hydrogen gas, which is flammable. There are two categories of common acids that we're going to talk about right now, and we're going to name. The easiest ones are binary acids, which contain only two elements or components. And then the other category are oxyacids which contain oxygen. And really, you make those by a hydrogen or hydrogens combined with whatever anion um, that we looked at before that's an oxyanion. So we'll look at the easy one first, naming binary acids. You put hydro plus the base name of the nonmetal, ic acid. So if you look at the periodic table, HF, okay, HF is going to be hydro lauric acid. And there's a space there. It's just I wasn't looking when I was writing. I usually write in cursive. <clears throat> okay, what about HCl? What do you call that? Hydrochloric acid. What about HBr? It's right there in front of us, hydrobromic acid. What about HI? Hydroiodic. Hydroiodic. And that's it. That's them. That's the binary acids. So if you know those, you know the binary acids. They're all named the same. So, learn the binary acids. You'll have one. That's two points. Okay, oxy acids. How do you do oxy acids? Well, let's take a look. If the oxy anion ends with ATE, then the base name becomes ic acid. If the oxy anion ends with ITE, then the base name becomes us acid. And you know what we're going to do? We're going to do a few of these. 
just to help you. There's nothing like clean paper. Plain paper. Okay, let's look at this acid. <clears throat> How do we know it's an acid? It starts with an H. And we're going to look at the anion associated with it, NO2. NO2 is nitrite. NO2 is nitrite. Okay, if it ends with ITE, what do you put? Yeah, OUS. So it becomes nitrous acid. So HNO2 is nitrous acid. So HNO3, okay, NO3 is nitrate. Yeah, good job. And so this becomes, this is an N. Nitric acid. That's an N. Okay, H2SO3. Okay, what is SO3? So this becomes sulfurous acid. Yeah, you don't use it in the name. And SO4 is sulfate, which I know you guys know. So this would be sulfuric acid. Okay, that is almost, almost all of them. And for these, here's what sulfate looks like, SO4, 2 minus, sulfite, SO3, 2 minus, nitrate, NO3 minus, nitrite, NO2 minus, okay? That's what they look like. Now, what we're going to look for is uh, the chloride, chlorate, and the hypochlorite and the perchlorate. So this is what we're going to do. H C L O H C L O two H C L O three and H C L O four. Here we go. Okay. This is hypochlorite. This is chloride. This is chlorate. And perchlorate. Okay, so now you guys are going to tell me what acids they make. I'll give you a minute. If I had a remote control, I could pause the video. 
<clears throat> That's okay, just fast forward. All right, so hypochlorite, what acid would that be? Hypochlorous. Hypochlorous. Good job. And chloride. Chlorus. Chlorus. And chlorate. Chlorine. And perchlorate. And perchloric is a nasty, nasty acid. There are people that are very sensitive to perchloric, and if I had a bottle in the hood, in the lab, and some of you were, which probably some of you are sensitive to it, you would know it as soon as you walked in the lab. You'd start having symptoms. Okay, so that's it. That's the acids. You guys should be in good shape as far as naming the acids, because that's all, that's all there is to it. Okay, I'm going to take this away and I want to turn back to molecular compounds. Molecular compounds include things like CO2 and how you name something that is CO2. CO2, what's the name? Yeah, that's how you name molecular compounds. <laughs> how